popular bands. Now, so far today, the community has been spot on all three times, and it's been a massive difference. It's not going to be that much of a difference this time either. Almost 80% of you thinking that Immortals will take it based on their performance against Liquid. I think that's a probably safe bet. I'm actually surprised it's not even more in Immortals Corner. If I'm being honest, I mean, we've got Red Devils, who the, the newest addition to Latin American Pro League, and the, because of that, you, you don't have a whole lot to base your, your vote on for them unless you're just a fan. Uh, for Immortals, on the other hand, they're a proven team. Again, one that's been around for a long time. As you said, that have always been on like kind of the precipice of breaking free, but they have just started to do just that. So... I don't know. I, you know, we saw what was an eighty-four percent for for Ninjas in Pajamas, and then Phase was, was something like eighty-six percent or something along those lines. I, I would have figured we'd have uh, something similar. Well, at least a little bit higher for Immortals here. It was pretty high though. Seventy-nine, seventy-nine percent is is pretty high. So, Clubhouse, the map that we'll be playing, and. Uh, if you want to keep up to date on anything that goes on in Pro League, you can go to this URL down here, proleague.com forward slash rainbow six. We have the schedule there. We have news and, you know, all the different VODs. Everything is listed nice and easy to uh, sift through that information. Um, I'm just waiting for everybody to get ready for this match, but uh, got a pretty exciting one. And again, it's going to be one of those matches that you watch because you want to know what does Red Devils have to show us? After the rework, I actually think that Clubhouse has probably become one of my most enjoyed matches or, or Map. maps to yeah. cast. Absolutely. I I find that Clubhouse is so dynamic because you can see Church is, Church is very similar to the basement of Bank. There's usually a way that it's played. You can, depending on operator bands, you can try to take Church, you can try to take uh, Dirt Tunnel, you can try to take Blue, you can attack Kitchen. There's the ability to impact Trick, uh, the Hatch and Kitchen as well. There's a lot of different ways to play it out. But the real difference maker to me is Jim Master and CCTV Cash, because I find that both of them, there's a lot of different ways that you can begin to attack those two sites and really make it your own. You will have to wrestle Cash away from them if you're attacking Jim Master. Do you go for Jacuzzi side? Do you try to take bar and stock from below? Do you put pressure in towards the office? Do you go onto the windows outside of Master, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Like I said, not trying to break it all down in absentia, but I find that those two sites in particular there's no shortage of ways for teams to use really diverse operator lineups and really intricate strategies. And I think that that's great, not just for teams, but also from a spectator perspective, because there's very little that's the same. And yet, so little that was changed. I mean, if you really look at the top floor, they, they, they moved around a lot, but for the most part, it was just the addition of construction. Yep. Like, that was, that was the big change. That was the huge alteration. And then you have the one site nobody plays bar the most changed of all of the sites without question basement got an extra lane to blue upstairs got construction bar got a complete overhaul yep. and nobody goes anywhere near it it's like the site has the plague and they're trying to avoid it seriously i mean even when it's not being defended no very few people go there if you're going there it's because you're a roamer and you want to confuse your opponent that whole area has become a little bit of a maze that people again don't really seem to have fully figured out just yet and i think that's probably one of the reasons why people don't defend it so much that and it's still not a very good site but um it's new and it's confusing and people don't like to go there. And that's the truth about Clubhouse now. I mean, you've got the, the lesser changed sites more played than the most changed site. Bar Stock was the second most played site on the old Clubhouse, as you said. But that'll, you know, that was because all the other sites it, they were, were bad, dreadful. Yeah. You know? like, so you're not going to go upstairs in either of those sites because you're cut off. There was no rotate. The addition of construction, as you said, the changes over towards the master gym side of things, the change to the hatch in the logistics office, the change to garage, all of those things were absolutely massive. So made it ultimately a much more playable site, but we don't need to theory craft for you anymore. We're going to launch into our final matchup of the day, Clubhouse, between Immortals and Latin America's newest team, Red Devils. And we'll see as we enter the ban phase here between these two teams. We will be having the ban start out by Red Devils, of course, because they are on defense, and they're going to get rid of Habana, which is going to make the basement so much easier to defend, as well as actually other sites. I mean, just in general, hard destruction is so important on this map. And could you imagine if they banned Thermite right now? 
Please do it. Well, I, Maverick is usually banned here actually quite a lot. I was surprised that they didn't lead off with a Maverick ban because Maverick can completely negate the ability for Bandit or Mute to do the job on any of the walls. You can get the hatches quite successfully with it. You can take Dirt with it because he can create a crouch hole in Dirt. Usually you need an entire exothermic charge to do that, but you can use Maverick quite well. So we actually haven't seen a lot of matches, I feel like, where he's been unbanned on Clubhouse, and it'll be uh, somewhat intriguing if either of these teams opt to run him. Valkyrie uh, banned out as well, in addition to Ying, and you were saying. On that note with uh, with Maverick, um, have you noticed his play rate has been pretty substantial? I mean, even just through today, lots and lots and lots of Maverick. Of course, on bank both times, you're going to need to bring Maverick. You have to bring Maverick because yes. Albon is banned. But uh, just in general, he seemed pretty darn popular overall um, for today. Echo has been banned every match so far, and uh, he will be banned once more. The other two defenders that have been banned, or three actually, have been Mute, Mira, and Valkyrie over these matches today. But Habana also banned three times, and Glass only being banned once. Montaigne also got some love, and Ying twice. So a pretty standard ban phase for all matches, but at the same time, a little bit of diversity, and you know that's always nice. I think the big thing, too, with the Monty ban, though, was that was a preferential ban. Of course, yeah. That was just solely to done to try to shut down FaZe. As you know, they run Monty on both Clubhouse and Bank. Plus, it was Quite a fair bit. Yeah, it was, it was Bank. Yes. And we saw how, how powerful Bank wa or Monty was for even uh, instant nip in the previous time Bank was played today. Basement here for Red Devils to start things off. Pretty standard fare. Uh, usually it's basement or cash to begin for most teams these days. Sometimes gym, but really, I mean, they're interchangeable. Gym, I think, is out of the three sites that we see on Clubhouse the most. Gym tends to be the one. Gym Master is mm -hmm. probably the one that ends up being the least defended of the three. Probably, yeah. I mean, it's, it's people like it, but there's certainly a lot more love for, for cash and basement. So... Standard setup coming out here for Red Devils, and uh, they're setting up a rotation into blue as well as, I'm sure they will eventually set up that rotation in between sites in the hallway so they can cover the drop down. Probably going to be setting up for impact tricking as well, so they can deny that kitchen drop down. It's one of the few drop downs that you can impact trick these days, and a and, uh, very powerful thing to do played correctly. Not that we want language to gatekeep in case anybody's curious what impact tricking is. It means that you throw an impact grenade, which are held by the people on defense. So if you look at the top, you have the lesion holding on to the impact grenades. Potentially a smoke too. Potentially. And, but and, probably not. And smoke might have one as well. So basically you want to use it, you throw the impact grenade and the explosion from the defender's impact grenade will blow up either the Xkaros or the exothermic charge, both Ibana's and Thermite's gadgets, meaning that you basically preserve the hatch, its, uh, its integrity, and not allow the attackers to take that away from you. So that's what impact tricking is for those that might not be familiar with the language. We also have pre-prepped holes on the bomb. church wall there just by Bandit to throw a C4 over to kill anybody trying to open up that very same wall. It's a difficult angle to pull off, but it's something that these players, of course, practice so they can hit it every single time. We'll see if uh, that C4 will land if it's ever needed in this round. Mortals definitely have a tall task ahead. This uh, defensive setup looks pretty solid. You can see PX is going to be opening up the drop down here. Of course, Habana being banned means he has to do this along with Thermite, or they're not going to be able to open up all the drops. Not as clean as efficient cam as Cameraman in the previous one, but still. Well, he's still pretty efficient. <laughs> I'm, uh, but you do have to give props to the camera for sure. I'm kidding, of course. The proximity explosions of the Zofia Guzmat projectiles going off inside a church will alert Immortals to the fact there's at least one body from Red Devils playing there. Two members of Red Devils, very low on HP, that's Mighty and Abru. Both the smoke and the Mira, with the Mira ejected in blue. See, an impact grenade will get tossed at Navi's and take about 50 damage. Or take away about 50 HP of Navi's as he looks to just walk right in and takes two down as Velvet in the midst of a reset. Or rather, tries to get Abru in the midst of a reset, and Navi's has complete control amidst the smoke. 
You'll see Mighty go down as Bullet pushes in. PX refrag from VNX invites right there to take out Cyber. This bullet is down and Navi's is very low. This is easily winnable for Red Devils if they play their cards right. The defense are relied upon to, to win this particular site. M-King will wait for the exothermic charge to go off and will need to waltz in and go for the plan. It's all hinging on Navi's. His time is out and there's VNX. Vites is down, it gets finished off by Navi's. VNX trying to hit the Zofia. Diffuser goes down successfully and Red Devils find themselves with one man trying to hold it all together. Playing just an arsenal room, cannot land the shots as all Navi's needs to do is continue to waste time. A third of that diffuser goes down and VNX will find his man, but so will Bullet. One HP and a dream for the buck all the way at the bottom of main stairs. The ACOG on the C8 opens up the wall right next to Pulse Spot. We'll finish it off. And the attacker's winning. Church is not commonplace here on Clubhouse. It's a good start for Immortals. Yeah, and I gotta be honest, it all comes down to the Legion of Vitz in blue not watching while his teammates are picking each other up. So when you when you have two players in church and you're the uh, third off player and you're inside of blue and your job is to support the two church players and those two church players call, I'm picking him up cover, which I had to have been a made a call, uh, a call that had been made. Or, and if not, he should have seen it in his peripheral vision. Then you need to commit fully to holding on to that, uh, that moto door. Because the fact that Navi's was allowed to walk in, get two kills, and then Defenders retain control of Church, by just, that just shouldn't have happened. There's no, I don't really have any other way to put that. So uh, definitely a big mistake there from the Legion on Red Devils, uh, Vitz. And something that hopefully he will be able to correct the next time that that opportunity presents, it presents itself. Now, Immortals, Good start. They're going to have to attack onto the basement once more. It's very likely that Red Devils won't make that mistake again. And uh, that was the major mistake they made. It was pretty much just bad timing on the cover and uh, pick up of one of their teammates. Out of the three sites from the last time I remember seeing these stats was the church downstairs where the defense won more often than not, which is why we would often see a lot of Gym Master and CCTV cash play upstairs because this site would be won and then because of the rotation of sites for the defenders, you'd only go back here really one more time, if that. So having Immortals take the first time is not exactly a problem. It could just be Red Devils coming very, very close. And it really did come down to the wire for Immortals, so maybe one could suggest that it could have gone either way the second time around. I think the trouble starts to begin if Red Devils isn't successful on this site. On this particular take, then you have to go up to Gym Master or CCTV and really try to hammer it out because you ought to be winning this site. So yeah, and, and if that is the case, uh, then that's a serious problem for Red Devils. And uh, it could potentially uh, be the single thing that causes them to lose this match if they're unable to defend the basement. So we'll see what happens. Um, it's going to be, I'm guessing, a very different attack here from Immortals. Uh, they finally cleared out all of the top floor. You gotta make sure that there's nobody defending uh, upstairs, anybody roaming. This has been the meta on Clubhouse actually since the very beginning. One thing you have to do at the beginning is drone out all of the potential roaming spots on the top floor and middle floor before you start pushing into the building and uh, trying to clear downstairs. Because it is common that all five defenders will hold exclusively downstairs, but it is not a guarantee. And it is much easier in this current iteration of the map to roam than it was in the previous one. So there are instances of defense actually roaming on this basement hold. Not the case though here, not the case in the previous round, Red Devils are playing it safe. PX knowing that the Bandit of Velvet underneath was going to cause him some anxiety, a bit too quick and careless on the hatch inside of the bar, but now opened up will give Cyber free reign to sit over top of it. The reticle of the glass will wait patiently and see if there's going to be any targets that decide to pop out. As Glass always says, it's in the details, right? And while there's no details really to look at outside of the nice frill of the carpet, you're going to see a smoke go down and some concussive blasts go out from Immortals trying to deduce where the defenders are sitting, and Cyber will continue to walk onwards. And Nitro Cell goes Ooh. off, but Abru just sprays into the smoke, manages to get lucky enough to hit the target he needs, even after that C4 didn't do the trick. So that is a big loss to Immortals. They're very short on time here, only 30 seconds left for the rest of the team to try to pull this off. Navi's rotating in towards Moto. 
He's going to stare into blue. Once again, that mirror window has been ejected, and the lesion of Vites who'd been playing in there has now scrambled off. Red Devil's in a much better position than last time around. And because of the fact that Immortals has to just trail in through tiny doorways, it should be an easy hold. And that's going to be a lock, at least for the time being. It's actually a flawless round. Excellent hold from Red Devils, and that's what they need more of as... There you go. Grab the round that you need, and they lock out Church. It's tied up 1-1. One, one. So, Immortals there was reliant on the Glaz being successful. And when the Glaz was met by some random spray through the smoke, there was no fallback. There was no plan B for Immortals. And that's a little bit disheartening to see. It would be nice if Immortals put a little bit more emphasis on maybe taking into blue, establish that crossfire. That is the typical strategy when attacking from Moto. You will attack Moto, Church Wall, Thermite that open, but you will also simultaneously push through blue. Once you have control of blue, you can easily establish a crossfire onto Church and get that control, go for that plant. But that wasn't the case here for Immortals. They pretty much ignored blue and they just focused entirely on Moto. Did not work out for them. Good job to Red Devils holding on to all of those lanes as well. Now, we're going to cash room for our second site. Third total, but second site total, or in terms of what has been defended by Red Devils. imagine that we're probably going to see the maestro sit up on top of the garage catwalk and just wait very patiently. Yeah, pretty typical. Here's one thing that Maverick doesn't do that a Hibana would work quite effectively here on garage is that see the two panels that are being reinforced. So Mighty's at the the more northern panel and you've got the other one in the south that's now on the left as well. I mean, the rotation isn't really helping here to describe this, but basically, basically the panel that is closest to the stairwell. Yeah. As Hibana, what you want to do is you want to hit that with your Xkeros, open it up, and then when you stand down, you've got a great line of sight all the way up to the window that rests on Catwalk. And you can catch anybody that's rotating in and out. Obviously, this matters if there's no rotate hole in this in the double wall, but you see we, just for a moment there, can see it. There is indeed a rotate hole in towards CCTV. Now, because of this, it's a very strong position for the attackers to play, and it puts them in a spot where it effectively cuts off a rotate that you need after you get pressured inside a garage. Because of the way the catwalk works, you'll typically put somebody up there who has an ACOG, and that could be either the Doc or the Maestro. While I'm saying this, you're gonna see an Impact Trick try to take out the Exothermic Charge, and they won't be successful. So Red Devils will concede that wall, and in the process, they'll lose one Impact Grenade. Most importantly, they'll lose a Mirror Window as well. There are a lot of teams who won't put a Mirror Window there, Michael, because if you have a Twitch drone, it's very easy to lose that and end up basically giving away real estate to your opponents. Nope. Not gonna say it. No. So, server wall now open. And Immortals are also pressuring from construction, so they've got a good two-pronged assault set up here. They gotta time it properly. They weren't successful in their last attempt at doing this in the basement, but maybe this is going to be their moment here. Three coming from construction, and it looks like two coming over by the server side. They have given up on attempting to control Garage. That is all well and good. It's going to be Velvet who is in that position. He will be the clutch player. And it looks like actually the server wall has been abandoned in its entirety. The simple push from the west side. Server wall just a distraction. A costly one though for the attacking team. And we'll see if it costs them too much. Second Thermite, though, will be able to open up that construction wall. And through what a narrow angle and the smoke, Cyber is able to take down Fitz. Excellent shot. Oh, oh no, Cyber through the wall. He had no information. Throwing Just the game grenade. sense of an excellent player. And he is going to put a lot of damage onto the Maestro as well. But he's not able to get that kill. He is down on the push in through the smoke. Excellent game sense there from the defenders, but it's still a significant advantage in favor of Red Devils. The only thing they have in their corner, though, is the time. Immortals able to take down Midi, and uh, now it is a two versus four. So the advantage shifted over towards Immortals, and PX able to take down Velvet means it's just Abru at the top of the cash stairs, and he's gonna have to fight against four. Not likely to happen, and it won't even get a single kill. Navi's able to shut down the Mira. Great job there, two Immortals clearing their way into sight. 
not even necessarily just focusing on the way that that round broke down there. There was just a lot of missed shots from Red Devils, and we've actually seen that as well with the Jaeger that was downstairs in church on the very first round. Your inability to hit shots is something that doesn't often get brought up in Pro League because typically teams miss from time to time, players miss from time to time, it happens. But, but. usually we try to give credit where credit is due. Not everybody's going to hit shots all the time, and sometimes these are not quite routine. You're under pressure, maybe you're getting wrong comms, etc. I know that you and I both try to reserve our condemnation of people who miss their shots for very specific moments because you don't want to be that person who constantly looks like, you know, oh my gosh, they're just not hitting their shots. I'm a very critical person, so I just try to skip over all of it for the most part. But over the last three de Defense three rounds, Red Devils have struggled down. to hit their shots. Yeah, And that's something that you have to keep in mind because things can go according to plan with your utility. Things can go and fall into place with your strategies. But if you can't hit shots that you need to be hitting, and we're not talking about, and we're not we're not talking about uh, you know hitting shots that we're not expecting you to hit, but we're talking about routine things. Then that's a problem. And so far, there are two rounds here where I look at Red Devils and I have seen an inability to hit shots that they really need to be able to. Learn. So that's just one area of improvement. It's very difficult for you to make a change for that in like the middle of a round, but something that they're going to need to probably yeah, focus on to a certain extent. So something, no. something to note, um, it's not entirely, you know, there's no one reason why that would be the case. It's not, we're not saying that, oh, they're bad players, they can't get shots. I think what Parker's trying to get at is, like, there, whatever it is, it cannot be so persistent in at this level of play. And it's something that they're going to have to uh, change. I, if, it, if, if I were to point a finger at one thing, I would say it's inexperience. And uh, what? What did I miss? Did I miss it? An immediate kill as Navi's just blindly walks into Velvet. I didn't see it. But okay. All right. So uh, Navi's giving a kill to Velvet. Maybe some misinformation there on the other side of the fence. Uh, a little bit of a whoopsie there from Mortals. But yeah, if I were to point a finger at anything, I would call I would point a finger at inexperience. I mean, these, this team is still new. To, to Pro League, all things considered, and uh, it's going to take them take them some time. So, yeah, it could be anything stemming from that inexperience. It could be, you know, still kind of on uh, shaky, getting used to uh, playing at this level. Whatever the case, it, you're right. It needs to be improved upon. Now, Velvet able to get that kill early on, and uh, Garage control control because of that still firmly in uh, Red Devil's corner. But the thing is, uh, Immortals did not need Garage Control the last time they attacked this site. So I'm not exactly... I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't think Immortals needs to worry too much about, uh, about that death. But at the same time, it was kind of a waste. Yeah, and I mean, most importantly, it also has allowed Red Devils to have this garage uncontested for now a minute and a half. And, and the, the, well, the problem is, is that I think they're trying to contest. Oh, okay, and uh, M King's oh. gonna take down Velvet because Velvet exposes himself to the uh, server wall. So that's lack of that's a lack of knowledge on the Bob angles there from Velvet. Attackers. Simple as. There's nothing else to say. Was uh, it's a weird sledge. This is this is quite the. Okay, so si just to clarify, this is quite the this is quite the ride along. <laughs> Just to, just to clarify, Cyber cannot see that. Uh, he sees the normal scope. It's just a spectator bug, so it's not influencing his play, or it shouldn't be, at least. It's not. It's, yeah, it's not. It's, it is it, not. There's lots of spectator bugs. I mean, it happens from time to time, and now you see Cyber pushing in. He's going to take down another member of Red Devils. And they're essentially pinned down, and a big part of that is that Maverick going unbanned causes such a massive issue onto the wall. Phoenix will catch Bullet just completely unaware downstairs in lounge. Yeah, be an easy pickup for Red Devils with 20 seconds to go as the action will now begin to accelerate to a certain extent. Cyber still having an issue with that scope and we'll need to get it realigned at some go. point. Just waiting to see who's gonna bother to push. There's a smoke down below and he knows that there might be a pressure in through lounge. He's gonna track Vites quite well. Look for another. M King will jump into the fun too and leave Avery down oh, he's below. Got a C4. Who has a C4? But oh, what is he doing? No, but they still win it. Win it. What? What? So that round, we're gonna forget that happened. We're just going to pass over everything that. in the final 20 seconds there. Immortals plays it perfectly. But I think the Diffuse Planter hit a goo mine. That, yeah. So couldn't plant 
because they had to pull the goo mine out of their foot. Outskilled. And could not get the defuse down. And even though Abru totally botched what should have been a pretty routine grasp of that round, we're just going to have a rehost here for a second so you come back to us. Hey. Uh, yeah. I mean, that was, that was really, that was, that was an ending. They happen. Spectacular ending mm -hmm. to a round. A really interesting one. Um, so, uh, chaos. Yeah, a, a botched C4, a failed kill downstairs, a failed plant upstairs because of a lesion. Mine, I think. We think. We couldn't see. We couldn't see. So we're, that's a safe assumption. Mm -hmm. uh, we did hear. I did hear one trigger. I heard it go I'm off as well. Sure. Yeah. So. I heard it go off as well, but the perspective of the mirror wasn't. They don't. It doesn't allow you to see yeah, necessarily so what happened because know. there's three bodies above, and you can't really tell which one actually hit the goo mine. And whatever the case. Uh, all right. Yeah. Red Devils won the round, and they didn't feel like they should. Astonishingly, by the way. Yeah, that's the word. Uh, astonishingly, won that round. Astonishingly, that's a good one. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll get everything sorted back up, and uh, all that round will definitely count, of course, and we'll, it'll be the 2-2 the moving forward. I, I really can't believe that one, that last one. But we've seen, we've seen the same site defended. Uh, so, basement, first time for Red Devils, they lose it. Basement, second time, they win it. Cash, first time, they lose it. Cash, second time, they win it. So, I guess it's going to be basement or gym next, and they're going to lose it and then win it. That's going to be the pattern for this first half. I mean, right now, yeah, it's it. Second time's the charm for Red Devils. Yep. I mean, but it's... they don't they don't have to go to Gym Master though. At least at least depending on what happens in the next matchup, because they're or in the next round, because they they're going to they're gonna go to Church. Yeah. So they'll go back to Church downstairs. But and then if they win that, then they'll have to go to Gym Master. Right. Or Barstock. But if they if this pattern continues, if they get another set of this where they lose it and then win it, wherever they go, uh, that's bad. Because that means they're ending the the first half. I mean, de on defense, not winning the majority of the rounds. So, right, this you don't want that. You really want to be winning most of your defensive rounds. It's funny that we often look at Villa on and clubhouse. You need to win more on defense as Villa than you win on attack because that's the way it works out. When clubhouse actually has the more lopsided stats, something like I think it was like sixty-two percent to thirty-eight percent or something along the lines of, uh, right. if I remember correctly. It, I think it was the U.S. Nationals. I think it was 60, 62 to thirty-eight percent. They said the clubhouse was defender-sided. Okay. And I mean that's that's enormous. That basically means that for the most part, you should be winning at minimum four of your defenses quite easily, depending on the operators that are banned. At minimum, you should be winning four. So well, much. About, so I, you know, I'm just rethinking about that last round that we right. just saw, and it was so much about it was confusing. Velvet gets the free kill. Velvet becomes a free kill. Mm -hmm. Garage is now the control center for the attacking team. Two free kills for the glass from Garage. Somebody trying to flank up the stairs. Uh, another free kill. Uh, who was the other attacker who gave his life away? He buck downstairs in, in lounge. It was on drone. Yeah, who is completely no. vulnerable, expecting somebody to be on red, I think which is a pretty safe bet. Either he was on drone or he was trying to watch the flank from main lo main lobby. I, he was immobile with his back to the stairs. So I right. mean, that's that's the problem, right? And you you imagine right. somebody you've you've opened up that wall into CCTV. You have garage control. Where are they going to be sitting? At least one person's going to be on red. But uh, the point I'm trying to get at, at least at, one. I think the majority. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think now because. I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think almost all of those kills that everybody got were, like, free. Like, he's looking over there, or he randomly exposes himself to, a, to an angle for no reason. You know, it's like, none of them were... If, I don't remember... I'm trying to remember if there were any, like, direct confrontations where people saw each other and started shooting at each other. I'm sure there were. I mean, obviously, off-screen, too, we probably saw, didn't see everything. But most of the ones that I think we caught... We're, we're just like, hey, he's in the wrong place, looking the wrong way. They're just giving it away. And then, <laughs> it, is it free? Is it free, Parker? Are, are they giving it away? I'm not going to say it. You have to say it. It's free real estate. It's free real estate. So, but no, but that's what, that's what that last round was. And then it all ended in the most confusing way that I don't even want to try and comical this. almost is was the end comical was what it was it yeah. was like a, it was a calamity of errors I, was basically what happened and series both of teams, unfortunate events both teams made a, a a pretty healthy you know um you know pool of mistakes yeah and then and then 
the defense just won because that's what happens if the attackers can't get the <laughs> planter down. They won because that's what happens. That's what happens. When that's, the, that's what happens. Yeah. If, you know, if you don't get the diffuser. Down. So it, was, <laughs> it was pretty. It was Winning. pretty remarkable. All the same. Winning that is because that's what happens. There are a lot of rounds that really inspire you to kind of look at it and be like, "Wait, what just happened?" And I mean, as casters, our job is not to say like, "What just happened?" Because that's what you're thinking. At home, we don't we don't say like what's going. We're on. supposed to break it down. When you you're the ones you're the ones sitting at home saying what's See, going on, and we're supposed and to be like here's what's going on. But then we're sitting here and we're like, well, the thing what's is, going on? The thing is, so it may seem like we just laid out these teams, what what we just the analysis we just did about that round, but th that last little bit there, we could continue to explain, but it would be like twisting the knife, and it's just like it's unnecessary. <laughs> I mean, there's we're also, there's skip over. To be fair, there's also a lot of stuff that happens that we don't get. To visualize, you know? true. Like we were, we were true. riding on board with the glass for quite a while, and we had very odd and limited perspective as to what was happening. And then, mm -hmm. especially with the mirror downstairs, you know, you've got three bodies, like elephants, trampling through the site, and you just have no idea what's going on. And that, that's another thing. Why? I get that she has the C four, but why is the mirror downstairs? How did she get downstairs? She was last I saw, she was at the top of red. Right, and she's the so last. She must have been player. pushed off, assuming that they would have probably come from garage. And I get the C4, but that is so unreliable. And Immortals accounted for it, too. They push deeper into sight. Valkyrie and Echo are both banned. So the only real information that you're going to have as a defender is going to be an evil eye that hasn't been taken out. But that's relying on, number one, making sure that the evil eye is in a position where it can actively see what's going on, and you can be able to call it and be able to get the C4 from there, below. I think there was an evil eye in the site. I don't know if it had been destroyed, but I do remember the evil eye being placed next to the window in server, the, the small window. Like it was on top, uh, he vaulted on the desk next to the window and put it high. So uh, I know there was an evil eye in the site, but we don't know if it was destroyed or not. So, eh, but yeah, it was it, ah, just a weird round. Weird, weird, weird round. So we're just waiting on everyone to get ready before we get back into this match. But uh, yeah, that round was definitely really interesting. And I'm glad for it because it means we have stuff to break down. Red Devils are very lucky because that was a round that, by all means, they probably shouldn't have won. Yes, yes, they should. They should have lost. It should be it's, three it's one a, right it's now. A, it's a three v one. Your last defender is Amira downstairs, who's not in a position by nature. Misses their C four to get the C four off. It's not a pulse. It's not a Valkyrie. It's not a mute with an with a yokai drone or or an, you know an evil eye or, or whatever above you being able to give you that information. You're down there because possibly been, an evil eye. You've been forced out. At this point, the defense should lose that. Red Devils should have lost that round, and you get saved by the graces of what appears to be a goo mine. From our perspective, we didn't get to see it. We heard it. We can guess. We can speculate as well as you can. It's assumptions. But it's just, it's, Education wow. And, and because of that, that really could be a huge difference maker here, because if Red Devils wins one of the next two rounds, they walk away splitting <laughs> their defense, I mean, which is massive, really, because, the, number one, Red Devils coming in is probably the team that is going to need to win every round in comparison to Immortals, just based upon success of these two teams. Yeah. But then on top of that, the defense needs to be winning. The fact that Immortals has already taken two rounds, that's good for Immortals. It's very good. If Immortals can take one more and force a tie, that's very good because then Immortals moves to defense, and that's even better, and then Immortals should win most of their defenses just based on the way that Clubhouse plays out. Not that we're trying to spoil this for you, but just trying to really break it down because we, yeah. have, we have time at our disposal at the moment. Red Devils needs to walk away with at least four of these six rounds, which means that they need to win their next two in order to get a healthy lead that will likely be chipped away at when the side switch and Immortals goes on to defense. If Immortals can take one of the next two rounds, that's obviously very big for them. Mm -hmm. But this is one round that Red Devils should have lost, which would have been massive for Immortals. But now for Red Devils, they're in much better position because of a series of unfortunate events. Yeah, and I think you said it, I think you said it perfectly. Um... I think in the in the context of this match, Red Devils, if they want to win or if they want to have any chance at winning at least, they definitely need to at least break even on this first half. Of course, uh, they you know it's defense; they should be winning most of these rounds. But uh, I think in the you know for for the Red for their career, as as weird as it sounds, every single round that they're they're winning, I think is is really good for them. The ways that it's looking right now. Um, I, you know, I think they're definitely the team slotted to lose this. If we're, if we're, we're going to be honest, we're going to jump into this. We're just going to say that they are the team that people expect to lose. On paper, sure. On paper, on as paper, well. sure. Yeah, and, and and on a map like Clubhouse, the paper is like gospel. If we're being, it, we're going to you know dive deeper into it. This is one of the most rigid maps. If out you're not, there. it's same with Villa. If you're yeah. if you are not winning your defenses, you're going to lose. That's and it, it. Yeah, and you can't let your opponent so, get that footing. So given that, um, 
everything that Red Devils is winning is is good. Period. I think just for the longevity of their career, I think it's fantastic. Um, but that last round win, that was massive because you said it right. They they just shouldn't have won it. They should. <laughs> there is no world in which that that that, that just should have been a victory. And yeah. and it and it is like you said, it's a series of unfortunate events. There's nothing you can really do to stop it. Um, just happened that way one thing i will say because we're, we're pointing a lot of fingers at at red devils right now we're, we're saying a lot about red devils immortals made a lot of mistakes that round as well um and they some that they shouldn't have i mean I, it was velvet peeking into garage at the very beginning of the round or it was the sophia peeking into the garage why and, uh, no it was velvet who got the kill onto the sophia um unnecessary you know uh drone it He's in there. Just drone it. Just drone it. Uh, you know he's in there too from the last round because that's he, where. I mean, he might have, to be totally honest with you. So it's like maybe he did, but then he challenged it from the doorway. You know, you you're not supposed to do that unless you're Blackbeard, and and then it's okay. But and even then, it's a risk. Don't just dry challenge the door in the garage. I understand maybe the confidence is like ah, we're the team and we're gonna win this. And, but at the same time, unnecessary risks. And Immortals hopefully will correct that. Game is ready, so we can head back into Clubhouse. Cause for celebration. Thank you for uh, your patience with us here as we... Uh, are you okay? Thank you. We'll get ready to go back into Clubhouse with round number five between these two teams. There's two rounds left of Red Devils on defense. All tied up. Good luck. Have fun in the chat for both of these teams. And we'll get back underway with our final matchup of Latin America Play Day number two. And uh, as predicted, Red Devils will go back downstairs. Not exactly surprising. I like the six pick there off of Capcan onto Maestro. Maestro, an Defender infinitely more useful bomb. operator. Capcan going to be in the minds of Immortals moving forward in this round, which will slow them down, force them to check the doorways until they realize we have been duped. There is no Capcan. Don't need to look at those doorways anymore. Oh, wait, yes, we do. There's a Legion. Abru going to be setting up his evil eye in the corner here by the jukebox. That's a really good position. I like that. Actually, he's going to get a lot of information on Moto and Church as a whole. Basement should be another one of those sites that Red Devils should just take away. And here's the big thing. Here's the kicker. Red Devils, if they get this win here, that's pretty good. Three rounds. Five seconds to go. That's uh, breaking even on the half at the very least. So good job to them if they manage it. Attackers recover. If they get two, then Attackers they're going into the second half really bomb. comfortable. That would be absolutely fantastic for them. Though I have to imagine once Immortals gets to defense, if they can lock things up, they might be able to just walk away with this one. That's the thing though. Immortals playing a little bit sloppy in the last round. The question is, are they going to get wise to that sloppy play and correct it? We know they have the capacity. Yeah. All right. So, I was hoping to see the Capkin, but we saw the Capkin in the Montane, and neither of them ended up happening. So, we got um. Well, the Capkin six picked is pretty typical. We got jabated twice. It's a pretty it's a pretty typical strat, though. I mean, jabated Michael. Jabated Parker. A pre-play C4 from Velvet as apparently everybody on Red Devils is going to head from the hills downstairs. As no real surprise, as Red Devils will occupy the church. Arsenal side of things down below as Jim Master has yet to rear its head in this matchup. We'll surely see it in round number six, depending on what happens here and if Red Devils ends up being successful. This is almost assuredly a must win for Red Devils in terms of the way that these rounds play off because, well, ready. if they lose it, then at best they can draw. And like we said, you need to absolutely be winning your defenses. There's the stock hatch with the ADS getting burned from below as Navi's dumps two of his Gishmots down in there. Rather than actual explosive projectiles, and then the Gishmots will go in two as M King gets the hatch inside of Kitchen. That's a scary prospect because you can easily impact Trick and Exothermic Charge in that position, but they don't really need to worry because Vites is playing all the way back in blue, miles away from where he'd need to be to toss up the impact. Yeah, Red Devils did not seem any, at all keen to impact Trick. Interesting that Vice is going to actually fall off of blue. That is a very dangerous play there for Legion. He's going to go right back in, though. Absolutely the right call. He needs to hold on to blue to deny the crossfire here. Uh, and 
if uh, he loses control of that crossfire, it could really easily cost his team the round. In fact, that's going to be one of the biggest focuses, I think it should be one of the biggest focuses for Immortals if they want to win this. Cyber, though, going to be coming from the construction tunnel. Met with a smoke, so there's not a lot of potential for him to actually make this push. Uh, especially as we come down to the last 30 seconds, though. Poor use of the gas canisters from uh, Mighty. It's gonna come down to the last one, and oh no, some missed shots there from Cyber. He only lands one onto Mighty. Navis will eliminate Vitz though, so it is still the first kill in favor of Immortals. But we're coming down to the last 15 seconds, and it's gonna be a bit of a mosh pit here. Cyber finally gets control of Construction Tunnel. PX through the drop will take down v, uh, VNX, and uh, we'll see a down Maestro, leaving just Velvet in the one versus five. He will get one, but he's quickly finished off by Bullet, and uh, that's it. That's all she wrote, I'd rather M-King, as the Immortals lock out that round. Very nearly a flawless round there as well, and I think yeah. that is something to focus on. That was very nearly picture perfect from Immortals on what I will remind people is typically one of the best sites for the defense, not just on this map, but also in the game. Red Devils will go back to church for the fourth time, and I'll be honest, the second time that Red Devils played it, and they won it, they did a great job. They locked down Church, they made sure that utility was squandered from Immortals, and then every single member of Immortals pushed in on their own through a narrow doorway and got picked apart. That's exactly what you want to do. And if you can make sure that you're managing your own utility and cutting down on the attacker's utility, then you're in really good shape to be able to ride it out and just pick them off as they walk right in. Obviously, as we saw in that round just now, it didn't work out quite so well. It's going to be a big focal point for round number six because, need we remind you, Red Devils will be going to attack at the conclusion of this round. So roughly about three and a half minutes, we'll see what they can muster on their first attack, but they got to get through this first. I really appreciate that Immortals had diversity in their strategy. They weren't just pushing in through Moto Door. They came from Blue, they came from Construction Tunnel, they came from Moto, they came from the main hallway. It's applying pressure to all the right points, and uh, not all of them worked, but uh, there were there was enough that uh, Immortals was able to make it push forward. I don't think regularly, or sorry, in a normal situation, that that's the right strategy to pull out. I think that's going to only work against certain teams, uh, and it was definitely a risk for Immortals to spread themselves so thin, but it did work. So, that's the main takeaway. Now, once again, Red Devils doubles up on their site, and every second attempt they have at these sites, they win, at least so far. A bomb has been located. <laughs> We've, today's been a day of patterns, so I wouldn't be too surprised to see Red Devils just completely lock this one out, and then... Nor I. You know, but... Uh... It's going to be interesting to see the way that Immortals play this. Now, Immortals hasn't really put that much focus on Blue nor Dirt last time around. They've been doing a pretty typical church take, controlling Moto and then making sure that you have somebody up top by Kitchen as well. And being able to pull off a successful push without taking the Kitchen Hatch is very difficult for the attackers. You need to be able to open up that Kitchen Hatch because that basically forces everybody on defense out of the Arsenal side of things. They're, un they're incapable of doing that, and that's going to be a problem. But oftentimes, as I said, you'll be impact tricking to try to take out the exothermic charge or the ex -Kairos. In this case, with Hibana Bandit, it's going to be an exothermic charge. The person holding on to those impacts, Vitz, is very, very far off. He's all the way in blue and is of no real use. Oh, looking to get the camera in the main hallway, that default cam. Maybe, maybe spending a, a little bit too much ammo on that, but it's okay. He's got plenty, not a problem. Ammo not usually one of those things you have to concern yourself with. Uh, that should be remedied soon. There you go. PX manages to take care of that drop down using his blow torch. And uh, just a standard setup so far from Immortals. It looks like they're trying to shift their focus a little bit from the previous attacks. They're aware that if they repeat themselves, it will be countered by Red Devils. I was actually just going to comment on how Navis was looking at the goo mines at the bottom, and I think that after you lose a round because you get a goo mine stuck in your foot, you yeah yeah you probably you probably need to be a bit more aware of where they are. You become attentive to the yeah, max, much more attentive. So, Red Devils in a good position right now, considering there's only 45 seconds left in Immortals. Or, did I say Red Immortals? Or did I say no? I said Red Devils. I'm losing it. Red Devils in a good position, given the time and the positioning of Immortals not being a good spot. 
to attack. It looks like they're gonna go for a just a focus in through Moto once more. Relying on Cyber, it's a big risk. And that's gonna be Cyber in the smoke. And last time around, it was Abru who stepped up and with the blind spray got the kill, but Mking felt by Navi's as Navi's does technically pick up a double, one of which is a member of his own team. Cyber's on his belly, snaps on Abru and the, the Vector will not be able to take down the glass. C4 goes off over the head of Cyber as Vitz takes him out. And then Velvet grabs a kill of his own. Velvet, right now, a last man standing right behind the bar. And Bullet is nowhere nearby as it's going to be the Legion inside of Blue rotating out. And with the ejected mirror window, giving him a pretty good vantage point. No real need for protection there. Say goodbye to the buck. And indeed, second time is always a charm for Red Devils. The two teams will tie through the first half. And Immortals on defense. We'll see where they start. So we go second half. Uh, I, I mean, this is where you would expect Immortals to break away with the match. They uh, managed to work out three wins on the attacking side. That's really good. Um, that's Immortals beating the odds right there and should put them in a fantastic position to win the match overall. Uh, but good on Red Devils to not allow a complete breakaway, especially at the end there. They're also going to be bringing a Montane, so that's, I think, going to be a really good tool while attacking the bottom floor. It'll serve a similar purpose to Glaz in that you can force your way in. Uh, and I got to be honest, the Glaz for Immortals was not working nearly as well as it should have. So Red Devils, I think, bringing the right tool for the job here. We'll see if they use it correctly. Keep in mind, this downstairs needs to be defended. Yeah, and that's another thing we were... We were touched on two failed attempts by Red Devils on the bottom floor. It's not good. It's not good. No. We still have yet to Attackers see Jim Master here, Michael, so yep. hopefully we do, because it's always intriguing to see the way the teams play this one out. Blue Presence is likely going to be a focus for Immortals, maybe be it by an evil eye that M King still has one in his possession he can place down, but he's going to create a rotate hole in and out of blue. Velvet will waste no time as the Monty will sprint in all the way up towards Garage, and he's going to look to clear on that second floor. You could have put a Monty down in Oil Pit. It's going to be the Legion that ends up stopping him, as Monty will likely need to retreat and after getting a goo mine in his foot, unless he has an escort to shoot them all out. A drone can do that, an IQ can do that, Thatcher can blow them open, but we have actually seen that much Thatcher play so far today. Vitz is going to, or Vitz is going to be using the Thatcher this time, as it's a successful second floor clear. Red Devils realizing that they don't have to worry about Immortals contesting on the very top floor. I have you covered. Interestingly enough, though, Velvet has been by himself this entire time. It didn't even look like he was being droned in. It just looked like he was the drone as the Montane endlessly pushing. I mean, it can work. It's just dangerous. That's the only thing. And he managed to make it work. So, props to him, I suppose. BNX going to be opening up that drop down. Wary of the C4, uh, it's really hard to land that C4. I don't think he needs to worry too much. But good on him for being cautious. Now, slow going here again for the attack. Standard fare while attacking the basement of Clubhouse. You need to set yourself up properly before you go for that site. Monty will finally encounter a Goomine and take almost 20 damage or so from that uh, mine or needle rather in his foot. Red Devils, I know you said slow going, but I'm actually impressed with Red Devils gusto here because they've managed to do it with minimal droning, it would appear. Bullet does greet Mighty, and that's the buck that will be felled as Abru tries to take out that church wall. It looks like a C4 will go off and say goodbye to the Monte. As he will meet an explosive finale with PX's oh, oh, C4 there, and PX will double up and hold your breath as a brew gets absolutely obliterated inside of Moto. Yeah, well, that's an absolute oof there for the Thermite. And you can see that it's trying to push his way into blue. VNX will take down Cyber, but he's quickly refragged. So it's just Vitz and all of the defenders aware of his position right now are going to adjust to hold his position. But it, ooh, what a clean shot from the Thermite. Absolutely brutal. He's going to have to find three more, though. And uh, it's very unlikely that it'll make it work, but 
one more at least onto the Maestro. With five seconds left, he will meet Bullet's Bullet though, and Immortals will take the round, their first defense, and that puts them at 4-3. That's what you need to see from the defense. And it shouldn't, it, I mean, it really shouldn't, and I hate to harp on it for Red Devils, but it really shouldn't take you two separate yeah. failed attempts to lock that one down. It was well played and it was patient by Immortals, just essentially waiting for Red Devils to come to them. Also, keep in mind that Immortals took a bit of chances there in, in ways that we wouldn't necessarily see for teams. The lesion of Bullet One taking out the buck on the hatch over top of Moto. That was aggression from the lesion that you don't necessarily need to see. And you don't see most of the time because a lot of teams, it'll bite them if you're not prepared for it. The gamble obviously paid off in this case. It took out the set of frag grenades that was on the table for Red Devils. And that, of course, is a particular problem, especially when you're trying to push into church. And those frag grenades can be so vital. It was the same aggression we saw from Navi's when he was peeking into Garage trying to challenge Velvet. It's the, I think I can beat you in this straight up fight, even though I have the disadvantage, confidence. Immortals has been displaying that confidence throughout this whole match. And if I'm being honest, it's probably why it's 4-3 right now. Um, maybe, you know, we can't obviously see every single engagement, um, but it's likely that on the individual scale, if maybe Immortals was just being a little bit more patient, a little bit more calculated, then this would not be quite as pitched as it is. That might be an unfair assumption. I'm not really sure. Again, can't really see the whole match. But it does feel that way because, as you said, there have been many instances where Immortals are peeking things they maybe don't need to. Challenging, you know, when they just don't need to and pushing where they just don't need to. Of course, that is all just speculation. Now, well, actually, and observation from the instances we've seen. But anyway, moving on. Immortals are going to be defending Cash, and they're going to be going up against Velvet's Montane play. So, this is probably one of the best uses of Montane on this map in the current iteration, um, pushing the Montane up those stairs into the balcony. There's not a whole lot you can do to stop it as a defender, save for Lesion and Echo. Currently, I don't think there are any Lesion traps on those stairs, and Echo is not in play because he's been banned. You're a fan of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I am. I really want... Velvet to play Zofia because they called Thunder the name of the launcher, so you can call oh, it Velvet Thunder. Velvet Thunder. But I don't know if that's gonna happen. I don't know if that's the role that Velvet is is designed to do. One of Mighty's grenades actually went off, and the other one uh, all the way up onto M King. It took a tiny bit of damage away from him, about a quarter of his life, and then the second one will get caught by an ADS. And I mean. That's just a lack of due diligence there from Red Devils. It's so common for there to be yeah. at least one ADS basically assisting the Maestro. And Mighty's actually gonna get found and picked off by Navi's as the mute does rotate and you say goodbye to the Canadian Soft Destructor. Yeah, so I really do like the position there for the buck, bring him all down, all the way downstairs, but yeah, there, there needs to be clearing on the ADS before you even attempt that. So a little bit of a mistake. Also, good job to Immortals rotating to take down uh, Mighty. Uh, knowing his position. I think we just heard an impact trick. I, I mean, you can't really see it and get the greatest view as Navi's picks up his second kill onto Abru and you say goodbye to the lone heart destructor, unshielding from Velvet, what? and he will dance around and take out M-King as M-King can just not land the shots needed. There's another body below. It's the Jaeger of Cyber, but luck will not be on Velvet's side this time as Cyber just takes out two with an extended barrel. And the Jaeger cannot be contained. Even just VNX left, but Navi's pick up three kills and it's a full house. Three for Navi's and two for the Jaeger. As Immortals will continue to march on and they'll pick up their second defensive victory. Something that we should have seen from Red Devils on their side of things. But alas, was not to be. And Michael, I think we might actually get to see Jim and Master for the first time today. So this is playing out exactly as predicted. Um, Immortals now breaking away with the match as they have been graced with the defensive side of Clubhouse. Uh, again, I will say that Immortals is playing a, a little bit brazenly, is that the right word? I, they're <sighs> peaking everything. I mean, Cyber, what are you doing? Cyber just walked into Garage on the base level and challenged and won. That's not supposed to work. Um, if the, but I also have to say, Red Devils, if you're putting a Montane in Garage, you need to put more more utility on clearing out garage 
You need to clear the ADS first, then use your nades. You also need to put just basic, more warm bodies to make that push happen, because if you're committing to a garage take, you have to really commit. It's actually been said numerous times by, by many pros is, is, you know, sometimes they just don't clear garage. Why don't they clear garage? Because it takes a lot of manpower, a lot of utility, and a lot of time. That's it. I mean, sometimes it's not worth it, so people just go elsewhere. You cannot half-heartedly clear out garage. And if you are successful in that endeavor, it is at the fault of your opponents. It's not because, it, it, you know, it just... So I think a little bit more focus there on garage if you're going to commit to it from Red Devils. Uh, also, a little bit better use of utility would be nice. But a clearing of the bottom floors to avoid losing Mighty for no reason. I, I mean, and I'm not sure what the Montaigne was really trying to accomplish by himself. All in all, though, um, well countered by Immortals just taking the fights and winning them. I was actually going to talk about it, but Navi's cut me off because he got the kills as the mute. It sounded like it was a successful impact trick as well to save the wall inside of CCTV as the Maverick basically Maverick basically cleaved the wall in half. Right. And it looked like they were trying to get an exothermic charge off below it, but I think there was an impact trick that happened quite well and it kept the wall in favor. But once again, didn't really have the best perspective. We were with Velvet at the time trying to see through the Montane shield. It didn't offer the best perspective on it, but I believe that was something that Immortals did that really threw off Red Devils. and. Yeah, if possible. that's the case, those are the kinds of things that can really separate, uh, at least separate a good team from the bad. Cyber opening kill onto Abru and say goodbye to your main hard destructor once again. Abru getting a little bit too close to the action as he has been. Well, he was the second kill for Red Devils last time, and he's now first. I don't know what Velvet was doing there, but Cyber will find one and looks for another as they're just peeking everything. The NX takes out M King, it's traded off, and now Vite's up to the stairs on the red, but no, he'll run into Cyber, and the Jaeger will gun him down, and it's a minute 20 left in this round, and once again, VNX will be left to try and clutch it for his team. He's at the top of red, and he'll catch a rotate on the Cyber. There wasn't much left of that Jaeger to begin with. And the M4 is a strong gun in the hands of a three-speed operator. He's gonna stare all the way down in towards Garage. He's still got the rotate hole, but he doesn't see Bullet around the corner. That's match point for Immortals as they make that one look easy. The site might have been Jim Master, but all the action happened in cash. Cash money, for sure. We'll go back down to church. Unless Immortals throws a curveball and sends us to bar stock. Match point. Uh, so, Velvet, just think a little bit more about how to play Montaigne, be cool. I'm not sure what he was looking at exactly. Uh, the wall, I guess. To the left. Maybe it was open. Yeah, yeah, it was open a little bit there. So he was probably just checking the line of sight. Weird. Uh, good job to Cyber holding on to that cash room. Uh, really, that round just came down to again. The immortals taking fights and winning them. So. Church Room, once again, we have gone full circle here on the site selection for Immortals. As they have won every single one of them. Need to so. and as many Except for, of course, the bar, but that doesn't count. Last time they were down here, it was a pretty dominant victory. The Red Devils tried to come from blue in Moto. It did not work at all. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. There hasn't been much from Red Devils that has worked on their attack so far. This is what we thought was going to happen and on the half transition. Right, and I mean, that's that's part of it is Clubhouse and part of it is, I think, the, the difference between these two teams. Immortals yep. were able to somewhat deftly handle Team Liquid in the first play day, and now I think they're doing something very similar this time around with Red Devils. It is a bit of a manhandling here, at least through on the defensive half for Immortals. You know the thing that really gets me, though? What really gets you, Michael? It's the... It's the flippant nature of how Immortals is playing right now. They're just kind of playing the game. You know what I mean? Oh, I thought you were going to say people who don't rewind their uh, their movie tapes when they give them back to Blockbuster. That really got me. Remember, please rewind. I Be never. Kind, please rewind. I never used Blockbuster, so that's not. I think it's from my age, but it's like I was. I never had the. Speaking of Blockbuster, great movie, uh, Space Jam. Bringing this up again. You could have rented it. I feel like I feel like with the break in between that we just had, we we wasted the Space Jam conversation. All too yeah. So my girlfriend heard that I have never watched Space Jam. Apparently, she didn't know that about me. And now I guarantee you, I'm gonna have to watch it when I get home. So I'm it's going, a great movie. I'm gonna you're have to. You're welcome. Like, it's a great movie. Is it, I, I have to now. 
So you've done that to me, Parker. I didn't even know it was a thing until just today. But, but yes, it, what really gets me is how Immortals is playing. They're just fighting every. They, they don't. I mean, there's not a lot of strategy to it. I mean, right, it's, it's, it's kind of planned aggression, but yes, they are. They're just they are. Fights. They are definitely just taking fights. And I mean, that's that's gonna burn you against better teams. No offense. Yeah. But against teams that are more prepared Bomb and are able to land their shots, which still Red Devils are struggling a little bit to land their shots. I think there are. That would burn you against a team that might, that might have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more prowess. I would, I would say, trying to phrase it without seeming mean or. No, but you're right, and that's the point I was trying to make. Right. So control above on that first floor, and on behalf of Red Devils, Immortals have not been really using anybody to try and roam. Of course, with this site on Clubhouse, it's one of the few where you can seat all five bodies comfortably, and because of this. You don't necessarily need to worry about total map control. Now, VNX droning himself in. So we see the telltale signs of a Maverick as the three little poke holes, now four, that mar the reinforcement at the back of dirt. He's making art. He's basically just waiting to see what he can possibly do. Now, the one thing about Maverick is that he's not exactly the best at, at finding uh, the ability to get into walls. But on dirt, when he has the time, he can make his way in. Velvet is the Ash has sprung into action and picked up two kills, though, both on the M-King and to Bullet, which has prompted PX to move up towards the vending machine here, the bar, rather, and the fridge, and see what's going to happen with the Ash. The mirror window will get ejected inside of blue, and Navi's is in a world of hurt. Gets finished off by Mighty as PX pulverizes Velvet inside of Moto, but Cyber and Dirt will need to head for the hills as PX picks up a second kill. Not a big magazine on that vector, so any push for multiple angles could be PX's downfall. Cyber just trying to work around it. Oh, he'll take out Abru and sees a second. Oh! <laughs> Somehow! Oh my goodness! It's Immortals grabbing victory as the Jaws of Defeat clench down on it and... You talked about you didn't like how aggressive they were getting. That's, it worked for them. They scramble out of the pocket. They still managed to score the touchdown. Immortals take it 7-3 to three in stunning fashion. Well done to Immortals. Pretty dominant victory there. I do hold that it, it could have been more dominant. I feel as though it really easily could have been.